I'm going to show you some magic. It's the real thing. <laughs> I genuinely love the process of manipulating people online for money. President Trump is a total and complete <laughs> Moving forward, we need to be more vigilant with what we trust from the internet. If humans are already tricked by, you know, simple spam emails, uh, I think deepfakes are going to be really effective in the future if there aren't tools in place against them. There was a project called the Video Rewrite Program, and that was the first major application of a deepfake. You could take one person talking in a video track and sync it to a different audio track and, you know, manipulate their face to make it seem like they're um, talking from the other audio track. I never met Forrest Gump. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. The term deepfake comes from deep learning mixed with fake event. So the fake event is the you know output of what a deepfake comes up with, and then um, deep learning is the the process to come up with the algorithms and everything to um, you know combine the image with the video. So a deepfake relies on a neural network, which basically takes a large sample of data and finds patterns throughout them. So you can take an image and apply it to a video of somebody moving their face. What's up, TikTok? Every now and then I like to treat myself. You know, deep Tom Cruise, if, if that was used for malicious, malicious purposes, um, you know, you could use a platform like TikTok to go viral and spread, you know, pretty dangerous news. As a human, if we pull up a video of someone and if the, if the voices sound similar enough, I feel like the image of the, um, you know, the deep fake will, will kind of trick the ears into like, you know, being like, oh, hey, that's that person's voice. Um, and you know, there are pretty good voice actors who can, who can re almost replicate the real thing. They take a train a ton of data of other humans moving their faces and then they can apply it to a still image but what they have to do is they first have to use algorithms to take that image at a low quality resolution and turn it into a high quality resolution it's bringing deep fakes to the masses in a way that hasn't really been seen before i think by being able to take like for example like an old deceased family member um taking one of their pictures and kind of you know turning them back into life that that could be a really cool experience for a lot of people Oh my god. taking a world leader and um, making a deep fake out of them and basically they could you know say whatever they want they could um, say things to cause public unrest um, you know say like I guess um, give dangerous information or dangerous I guess like commands um, you know to people um, you know family members can be impersonated so scams can happen that way as well I'd say like 10 years ago when text was the biggest thing text and images um, it wasn't nearly as big of an issue but now um, you know I, I already feel like the shorter form video platforms already have a huge like misinformation issue um, and fake news issue um, because video is so convincing and I'm sure like hackers are gonna get much more creative about this stuff especially going forward but I think big tech is going to be banding together and focusing on tools that can help prevent um, deep fakes or at least catch them right away and probably like pr uh, provide labels to say, hey, this like, you know, isn't good, especially, you know, on Facebook, Instagram, um, TikTok, any of these um, apps, these social media companies are, are the ones that need to be focusing on creating these tools, I think at the forefront of all of this, um, because they're the ones who'd be most heavily impacted and their users as well.